Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to day two of Volunteer Fest 2020. Uh, I wish we could be together in person, but unfortunately, COVID's not allowing us to do that. Uh, but we are grateful that we have the technology to be able to meet and for you guys to hear these opportunities that are still so needed out in our community. Uh, for this session, to, uh, I should introduce myself. My name is Brad Creighton, and I do community engagement and events with Volunteer Fox Cities. And today, our first session is with the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Fox Valley. So with that, I am going to introduce Sam, and Sam is going to take it over. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here today. Uh, my name is Sam Packard. I'm the volunteer coordinator over at the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Fox Valley. That's a mouthful. Um, I've been there since July of 2018, but I've been in the volunteer program since March of 2019. So um, almost two years now. So obviously, things look very different right now. Um, we aren't serving youth in the typical way that we would be, but we are still in need of some help. So I'm going to dive into a little bit about what the club typically looks like and then what it looks like during the pandemic and how you can help us out. So, Ooh. there we go. So first, our mission. Our mission is to inspire and enable all young people, especially those who need us most, to reach their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring citizens. So this has um, you know, remained as our mission even throughout the pandemic and everything looking so different. Um, kids, their safety, and their well-being, and obviously their futures are still always our priority. So, so pre-pandemic, what our clubs looked like is we do have nine locations across the Fox Valley. We have our Appleton branch, our Menasha branch, and then we actually have seven school sites. We have a school site in Little Chute and then six across Appleton, and we're actually looking to expand. So pretty soon we're going to have 11 sites. It's going to be crazy. Um, typically on any given day, we would serve about 1,300 youth across all of our sites and our programs, which is insane. Um, our days were typically pretty structured. We offered after school programming, um, programming on non school days, and we also had relationships with the different schools where kids would be transported by bus to club. So we had a really good system in place. Um, volunteers were able to help us out with things like mentoring, our Megabytes IT program, which taught kids how to do Hotmail and coding and things like that, our VEX Robotics Club. Reading with Rover, Page Turners, which is a tutoring program for kiddos. Um, and then volunteers could help us out. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> volunteers could help us out with things like assisting our staff in programming and then various events throughout the year. Um, at any given time, we had over 400 active volunteers. So that looks very different now. So when the pandemic first hit, we actually had to close seven of our nine sites initially. Initially, sorry. Um, so we lost about 1,000 youth. We lost the capacity to serve about 1,000 youth. Um, so we worked really hard to kind of try to figure out how can we still serve these youth um, in the environment that we're in. So today, though it looks very different, um, thanks to our funders and the different safety precautions that we've been able to put into place, we serve about 350 youth across our programs, which as you can see is a very big difference. Um, we're providing child care for children of essential workers. That's kind of our priority as the tier one workers and then, you know, other other youth as the spots open up. Um, but we're doing a lot of social distancing. We have the youth assigned to specific rooms. That way, if a positive case were to pop up, we um, could make sure that it was confined to that one area. Um, masks are required, and then we do screening at the entrance. So um, there's a lot of precautions in place that are kind of keeping us safe throughout this. And it's been working pretty well so far. Um, fortunately, we've been able to serve over 900 meals every day to youth across the community. So yeah, um, we're distributing them from both the Appleton and the Menasha clubs Monday through Friday. And that is kind of where we need the help. So this is actually a picture of a couple of our high school students that have been coming to help out with meal prep. They've been doing an awesome job. Um, so meal prep is at Appleton Monday through Friday, 930 to 1130. And then the meal distribution is at both club sites, Monday through Friday, 4 to 530. So um, 
Right now, I guess our biggest need is probably at our Menasha Club. People tend to gravitate more towards the Appleton location for some reason. So um, we could really use a lot of help at our Menasha site for distribution. Um, it is contactless. So for anybody that might be worried about, you know, going out and helping during the pandemic, um, it's curbside pickup. So there's no immediate contact with anybody else. Um, it's the meals are kind of set up on like a table and the volunteers are just there to like replenish the meals and make sure that, you know, the families don't have any questions, um, things like that. Pretty simple, but, and then of course, donations are always appreciated as a nonprofit. Um, the last thing that I do want to bring up though, is if people are not able to volunteer their time, like at the club, Turkey Trot is still going on this year. I don't know who all knows about it. It looks very different. <laughs> um, it's a home edition, so it's not downtown Appleton like it always has been. Um, typically, we would have need to find a hun couple hundred volunteers to help with that. So um, this year, we're just trying to encourage people to sign up with their families. Um, instead of a small pie, you do get a large pie this year. So hopefully that's incentive. I don't know. <laughs> um, you get a large pie and then they have like face, like turkey trot face coverings to kind of, you know, go with the, go with the times. Um, there's a couple other goodies. I can't remember off the top of my head, but the, Sam, the do you know how, do you know how someone would sign up for the turkey trot if they were interested? Yep, um, they could either reach out to me and I could connect them or they could go on to festivalfoods.com and um, they can sign up on there. Um, and I know they also have a Facebook page as well, Turkey Excellent. Trot does, so yeah. We just, got our, we just got our packets in the mail today. Oh, so you did? Yeah. <laughs> what did you, what all came with it? Like it was the, the game. So in thing? the packet, there was a shirt and then like a little box yeah. that covers your face. Plus um, there were some coupons in there and, and uh, like the pie coupon and all that stuff was in there as okay. well. Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty good stuff. Like it looks different, but I'm still kind of excited about it. So um, encouraging people to sign up for that since um, that does benefit the Boys and Girls Club and the Y, YMCA um, proceeds from that do so. And we're hoping that just as many people, if not more, sign up for that this year, even though it looks different. So that's always a big help if people aren't able to volunteer their time. So um, yeah, those are kind of our biggest opportunities right now. They obviously, as you can see, they look very different from like the five different programs we had before, um, but serving 900 meals every day to youth is really important right now. So um, still an awesome opportunity. Um, our application process does still look similar to how it would before. Um, though, you know, volunteers are not having like direct contact with our youth. Um, they are still in the same building as our youth and it's, you know, their safety and their well-being is our top priority. You know, we're being trusted to keep them safe. So it's still really important to go through this process. Um, the application can be found at bgclubfoxvalley.org slash volunteer, or I can email it out either way. Um, there's two references that are required with that. And then once those are submitted, we do a background screening. Um, and then I kind of put together, normally we would have like a one-on-one -on -one orientation in person, um, but I put together a little video in place of that. So then that would be sent out um, pretty painless for the most part, but still looks very similar. And then of course, my contact information. Um, this is actually my office phone. I am not in the office very often. Um, one time a week, but I do still check my voicemail from home. So um, if somebody is more comfortable calling, they absolutely can. Email is the most convenient, which I feel like that's, that goes for everybody. So um, if they have any questions or anything, they can reach out that way. I told you I would fly through that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great information. Um, I've got a couple questions if that's all right. Absolutely. Um, and if anybody watching has any questions, again, please feel free to unmute and ask or go ahead and use the chat and we'll make sure your questions get answered. Um, I loved your picture of your high school volunteers with the doing the meals. Um, what is your kind of minimum age requirement for being able to volunteer and or being able to volunteer by themselves without a parent or guardian there? So typically 16 is the age. Um, our rule was really 
if you were in ninth grade or four, or like and 14. That was kind of the bare minimum. Um, but 16 is probably, you know, the best age for, that's what most of our volunteers are anyway. Um, they don't have to have their parent there to volunteer. They just have to have a parent or guardian sign a form that we have if they're under 18. Um, but yeah. Perfect. Um, and then if somebody is um, trying to get service hours for a, a club or, or an honor society or something, um, do these qualify and do you sign off on those as yep. well? Yep, they absolutely qualify, definitely. Okay. Perfect. Um, so then let's, if, if you don't mind, let's talk for uh, a little bit. Let's be optimistic and hope that um, this COVID business is going to disappear uh, sometime in the near future. So. Um, what does kind of volunteering look like when everything's up and running and you're serving those incredible amounts of students you, you mentioned at the beginning? Yeah, so volunteering, um, like it has, we have the same application process, except we would actually meet in person um, for an hour of orientation and I'd give them a tour of the club and everything, kind of introduce them to staff, get them to feel comfortable. Um, volunteering, I guess the majority of our volunteers help out with program assisting. Um, that's kind of the most popular one because they get to come into club and they get to basically play. <laughs> they get to <laughs> hang out with kids in the games room and shoot pool or, you know, help them with, um, or they could play board games with them or um, I, I kind of whatever the kid wants to do, basically. It's pretty, it's pretty free for all, pretty laid back. So I think that's why most volunteers like that. Um, the other programs are equally important. They're just not quite as like they're more of a specific niche, like the, sure. the, um, the tech one, obviously, it makes most sense for someone who's a tech professional to come in and teach IT. Um, our VEX Robotics can really be anybody that's interested in building robots. Um, we actually partnered with Miller Electric, so a large majority of that program is kind of run by the Miller volunteers when it's operating. Um, and then the Page Turners program, that's kind of another popular one, too. Um, typically, our volunteers would come in for like 30 minutes to an hour once or twice a week, depending on their schedule, and they sit down with a um, kinder or first through third grade is typically the age, um, and they would read with them and kind of help help them with their literacy, give them, giving them that one-on-one -on -one that they can't always get at club. Sure. So those are kind of, and I guess there's the mentoring program as well. Um, we match volunteers up one-on-one -on -one with a club member who, you know, they might have something in common with. And they would typically come in once a week for about an hour. Absolutely welcome to do more. It's just, you know, most people are pretty busy. So that's typically how that looks. Great. So um, for, for those things, when they start to, when and if they start to phase back in, would we just watch your website or your Facebook to, to see that? Uh, maybe your Get Connected page? How would we find when you're starting to bring those things back in? That's a great question. Um, I think what Get Connected would be a great way because you'll suddenly see all of these opportunities flooding because um, mm -hmm. we're always constantly looking to fill all those programs. Um, but I also think that we'll probably put an update up on our Facebook, I imagine, um, or I could make that happen actually. Um, to, so people can kind of keep an eye out for that. Um, and then if anybody is a current volunteer, they'll actually get a mass email from me. I've been kind of updating the volunteer base as we go, like what things kind of look like and what's available. Um, so basically they'll hear about it some way. <laughs> sure. uh, sure. Absolutely. All right, can I put you on the spot a little bit? Oh boy. Um, do you have, um, maybe a, um, a story or um, a, a testimony or something that you've heard from, from one of your volunteers, either one of your, your mealtime volunteers now or somebody from in the past that just kind of shows, I mean, like, I know how amazing it is at the Boys and Girls Clubs. And um, I've heard from tons of your volunteers um, that they just truly enjoy it. But uh, what's something that you've heard firsthand that, that just shows what it means to be a Boys and Girls Clubs volunteer? So honestly, the first thing that popped into my head is we have a mentor. I'm just going to say his first name. I won't say his last name. Um, his name is Luke. And he came to us to start mentoring over a year ago. I can't remember the exact date, but 
Um, he got matched up one-on-one -on -one with a club member and um, the club member was a little bit quiet and shy at first, but Luke was, he was so consistent. He came every week. He never missed. Like he loved it. Um, I saw him all the time. I, I'm kind of in and out and running around to all the different sites constantly. So there wasn't a whole lot of volunteers that I actually got to see all the time, but I swear I always saw him. Mm -hmm. And um, what stuck out to me about him most, I guess, was when this all happened. Um, Luke actually reached out to me a couple times and he was like, hey, uh, I really miss my kid. Like, is there a way that we can connect? Is there a way we can, what can I do to help? Is there a way to virtually do this? And um, I know that, that his, his youth that he was connected with just adored him. I know he would always ask like, when, when's he coming? When's he coming? When's he coming back? You know what I mean? Um, they just had a really great connection. And so we weren't able to make the mentoring happen virtually right now. Um, but what I did is I let him know that we do have uh, like job openings if you want to stay connected and that way you know maybe you'll see your youth maybe you'll get to work with him maybe you know when he comes back if he's not already there boom like you're already there um, so he he was actually looking at taking a job with us um, so that kind of told me I love when volunteers become workers that <laughs> that always feels good it's like you know you enjoyed yeah. it that much that you wanted to stay so yeah, that's such a testament to a great program. You know, not only is it does it show that it's that it's well run and, and well done, but it also speaks to the work that you're doing and the lives that you're changing, you know, that someone wants to even be more a part of it. Right. Um, so so one more time to recap. Uh, again, if you if, if anybody watching either live or recorded is like me and is like, oh, I forgot to ask that when I had the chance. Uh, Sam's contact information is right there on the screen. Uh, go ahead and email her anytime. Uh, if you're watching live now, again, use the chat or, or pop in and, and ask a question if you have it. Uh, but to kind of recap, you know, you're looking for those meal volunteers. Yes. Yep. And uh, one more time, what's kind of the time commitment involved with that? So um, they could do as many days a week as they want. Right now, volunteers are just picking one day a week for two hours. Um, so two hours once a week, unless they wanted to do more. Sure, great. And uh, to to get more information or to sign up, they should email or call you, correct? Yes. Excellent. Well, Sam, thank you so much for, for taking the time and uh, for being here. And thank you to everybody for watching. Uh, again, on behalf of Volunteer Fox Cities, we are so grateful that you're a part of Volunteer Fest 2020 in its uh, virtual glory here. And uh, we, we hope that whether it's Boys and Girls Club or something else, you will find a way to connect that's meaningful uh, to you. Uh, make sure you check out our schedule online for the rest of the agencies uh, that are coming up tonight and the rest of the week. Uh, as well as don't forget to stop at the one-stop shop where you can see uh, all this information that Sam presented today is posted right there, plus all the contact information and everything else in case you didn't get the chance to uh, write it down. Uh, anything else you want to say uh, for parting words, Sam? I don't think so. I just, I'm looking forward to meeting. I love meeting new people. So if anybody reaches out, I look forward to meeting you. Great. And thanks well, for doing this. Oh, absolutely. It's our pleasure. And um, 